Hello, family members. I hope you're having a better week than I am. I got the letter that I knew was coming and went out to the mailbox and I opened it up. There's a big fat letter from the Social Security Administration. And I thought, I'm going to open this up. And it's going to be a denial, and it's going to be information on how to appeal. And I was right. Because <laughs> this is how the system works. The, my dad, who has been, who literally worked until he physically could not anymore, got denied the first time that he applied for disability. And... He had students who were severely and profoundly disabled, some of whom were not <laughs> approved the first time they applied. It's just the way the system is made to work, or actually not work. It's the brutal efficiency of creating a system that you know is so difficult to get through that people are going to have to give up because they run out of the resources they need to be able to continue the process. Like, you know, say after you lose your job because you can't work and you lose your insurance. So it's hard to go to a doctor and get the documentation you need to prove that you're disabled, especially when you don't have an easy diagnosis. Uh, the system is designed to fail in the hopes that you'll give up or die before you complete the process because that's one less person they have to pay even though I paid into social security all of my working life I started working when I was 18 and paid taxes the entire time and here I am in my 40s unable to work unable to, to function it's not even that that I am unable to work like I literally need support you know it's like negative work you know what I mean and <laughs> my government is doing everything it can to, to stall until I become homeless and not able to continue the process maybe I mean if I didn't have a family that's Supporting me. That's exactly what would happen. I literally, <laughs> I don't know what I would do. I wouldn't have a place to live. And my savings are running out. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. My life savings, everything that I saved for retirement is going to be gone. In maybe the next couple of months at the most. <sighs> but it's not just disability. It's not just the system that is designed to fail. And... Um, long history of of Supreme Court decisions, including Brown versus education, which everyone is familiar with, it's been established that children are entitled to a free and fair, uh, a free and appropriate, rather, a free and appropriate education, and they can't be segregated. But our country's not doing that. Like, how many people live in places where if you want your kid to have reasonable schooling, you literally have to, have to pay for private school? That's, I mean, like, that's the government not fully funding something that they are required to fully fund. It's, it's, how is it legal? I mean, it's so absurd that 
it's very localized funding for school, even though it's something that that's supposed to be equitable across all the country. But for some reason, people who live in rich neighborhoods can have nice public schools uh, sometimes. And people who live in poor or rural neighborhoods just get what they get. You know? And of course, uh, there's all sorts of ways that our society has laws requiring the government to fully fund certain social benefits to all society. Like, we pay taxes so that they will maintain the infrastructure for our nation. Uh, you know, all sorts of things. We are, our country is so severely underfunded. Like, if we fully funded school systems, if we fully funded healthcare systems, if we fully funded disability, if we fully funded um, uh, uh, social work, uh, social workers were paid what they deserve for such a, a horrible, hard job, but so necessary. Now, if we actually paid teachers and um, OTs and PTs and all the people that, that uh, support our population. We don't really, eat. I mean, there are, are legal changes that are necessary for society to become more equi equitable. However, if we only just enforce what is in the law, say public defenders, they're chronically underfunded. There are not enough of them. And so do people really get good legal representation if they can't afford it? Why is it justice is more accessible to people who have more money? That's not how it's supposed to be. We're all supposed to be equal. And it's just absolutely ridiculous that we're allowing these completely maliciously negligent assholes to murder us you know like this literally could kill me because i'm delaying treatments i'm doing things that i'm not getting support that i should be getting and who knows, it could kill me. And they wouldn't necessarily consider that a failure of their system. Because then they'd get out of paying me. Like, I was talking to my dad, and he said that the state of West Virginia had an X percentage of people on disability. And that they had a goal of taking that percentage down a certain amount of percentage points. The, the amount of disabled people that you have are the amount of disabled people that you have. It is not something that you can just arbitrarily say, oh, there's too many of these people. Where do you want them to do? Stop being disabled? Well, you know, if that were an option, most of us would already have taken it like a million times over. I would love to go back to my old life if I could. I would be happy as hell if I could work and hike and go to Disney World and do all the fucking things that I used to love to do that I cannot do anymore because my body won't let me and my government is fighting me the money that it owes me because I paid in for this. This is why I paid them tax money and they instead they want to send it to fucking genocidal maniacs in Israel. The fucking Israeli government is trying to murder all Palestinians. And they'd rather maybe fund that than keeping me alive. It's freaking insane. I can't take it. It's just driving me crazy, as you can see. So that's why, even though I look like a mess, and you know I keep messing with my hair because I know it looks terrible, I had to talk about this. I had to talk about this. I would love to see America just... Fund itself. Follow its own laws. Okay? 
Like, this is ridiculous. We need to have effective schools because that's good for communities. Even if you don't really care about education, let me tell you something. I grew up in a rural community where the largest employer in the county was the Board of Education. When you fully fund education with federal funds, you're taking money from the communities that are typically drained. Most of our money is drained out of the community. It goes to Walmart. It goes to Kroger's. It goes to out-of-state corporations. And so that brings those that those dollars those jobs secure jobs with benefits back into the rural communities that have been robbed blind by opportunist assholes who love to strip mine and then you know oh we're bankrupt we can't clean up there's literally a like toxic mine within two miles of my home that i grew up at in West Virginia, okay? Our community was so dependent on that school system and the absolute dog shit idea that Republicans have that they want to destroy the school system has filtered down to our little Republican county in West Virginia. And you know what's happening? It's becoming impossible to work for that school system. They can't find people to work. They are begging people to take jobs. Every talented person I know who works in that school system, which I might remind you is where my parents taught, my aunt and uncle taught, and my uncle, other uncle was a bus driver. We know a lot of people in the school system. Every single person I know that's teaching in that school system is has either left or is planning to leave, to go to a better school system. Are the people in, are the children of my home county getting a free and appropriate education in a circumstance like that? There's no way. And why is it that we can have nice roads in places like the nice communities, but in rural areas or poor areas, you get these awful roads that have t terrible potholes that put terrible wear on your car. <laughs> but we couldn't do that to the rich people. Like, I, my uncle was involved in Republican politics in Upshur County back in the, you know, 80s and 90s. Uh, Upshur County is Republican traditionally most of the state is democrat traditionally um because of long historical <laughs> really a lot of corruption in the democratic party in west virginia and historically <laughs> but at any rate um so you know he had this poll in the the county commission or something and he was able to get the road to the farm made perfect, like paved really good road right to his door. And then beyond that, who cares? Which our house was the first house beyond that, which I think is really very indicative of what kind of person my uncle was. He was very brilliant. He was a wonderful teacher. But he and my dad have a very complicated relationship for real. Anyway, and the funny thing about that is he and his wife sold the house and moved to another place like a long time ago, long, long time ago. And yet the next time that they really fixed the road up, they did the same thing. You know, this decision that was made to privilege a certain individual was causing policy changes even when that individual is not around anymore. We allow our country to favor certain people and just accept that there's nothing that can be done about that. We allow them to chronically underfund 
the programs that are our rights are human rights you know <laughs> i knew i had always heard i mean obviously my dad went through a disability process before so i had always heard that the system is designed this way the first time everybody gets denied da da da, da. and i really regret that i didn't understand how horrible how cruel, how malicious it is to put us through this. When you're going through a health crisis, when you're going through your life changing and you're not getting to be the person that you used to be, that you were proud of, that you worked really hard to be. When you're, you're so worried about your financial future and you don't know what's going to happen and you're scared and the system is designed to kick you while you're down and I wasn't in the streets screaming about how wrong this was. When I didn't have it happen directly to me. And I should have. I regret that so deeply. <laughs> I'm sorry that I didn't understand. I'm so sorry. And I hope, I hope there are people out there who are better than me and don't have to wait until they're disabled before they understand how cruel this is. Before that becomes a priority for them to demand that their lawmakers fully fund all these programs that we are owed, that we deserve, that they're lawfully required to provide to us. It is so hard. It is so hard. And it's meant to be. And that's that's cruel and unusual punishment. And I didn't commit any crime. Society wants to treat it like a crime if you can't work. If you can't be a productive member of society, then you're less valuable. That you, that you should just be grateful for any scraps that you get. You shouldn't have security and support. Because you've committed the crime of not being able to work. Where you've committed the crime of being born to parents who live in the wrong neighborhood. Where you've committed the crime of not living on the street with somebody power enough, powerful enough to get, you know, prompt snow removal or get your power restored quickly, you know, when there's a storm. Why are we accepting this? Why did I? Why did I accept it? <sighs> Casey wants to stay high, I think. <laughs> or maybe he just wants to snooze. family members I beg you please please don't let yourself live with this regret like I am please 
don't wait until tragedy happens to you to, to start fighting on the right side. Please. Please understand me. Because I'm giving you an opportunity to learn from my mistakes. And that's a gift. And I'm giving you this gift because I love you. Anyone who is watching this right now, I absolutely adore you for taking the time to hear me out. Well, I think I've gone through the stages <laughs> of grief and in front of your eyes, haven't I? Denial, rage, all that. I don't know about acceptance, though. I don't know if I should accept this. But life goes on. I got cats to feed. I got dogs to cuddle. What are you going to do? <laughs> I love you all. Please take care of yourselves. It's absolutely essential. Bye.